In the world of entertainment, whether it's a long-running anime series or a groundbreaking game, one of the initial priorities is world building. It's about creating characters that fans can connect with on a deep level. Let's take a moment to draw a parallel. Think back to the early days of Naruto, before Shippuden. The initial series laid the foundation by meticulously crafting characters that fans would grow to love. Similarly, in 1995, Namco introduced the gaming world to Tekken, a fighting game that began to construct a rich universe filled with themes of revenge and betrayal. Namco embarked on the journey of building the intricate world of Tekken, but how could they continue to expand this universe and breathe life into their characters? Surprisingly, they had an answer in less than a year after the first game. Welcome back to the Retro Fans Retrospective. Today we're diving deep into Namco's sequel to 1995's Tekken with Tekken 2. If you're a fan of this content and would love to see more, I've already completed and posted Tekken One's retrospective. Lastly, I need y'all to punch that like button, kick the subscribe button, and KO the notification bell. Let's dive into this. In 1995, as Tekken 1 was being ported to the PlayStation, the development of Tekken 2 was already in full swing. Remarkably, just five months after Tekken 1's PlayStation release, Tekken 2 made its debut in Japanese arcades. During Tekken 2's arcade run, the development team was hard at work planning its transition to Sony's PlayStation. Given the success of Tekken 1, it served as a valuable blueprint for making Tekken 2 even more impressive. Their journey began with character development. Each character in Tekken 2 was meticulously crafted, compromising of an impressive 800 polygons. What's more, Every character was designed to have a fully rendered CGI ending, surpassing the visual presentation of Tekken 1. The team wasn't content with just enhancing the graphics, they aimed to enrich the gameplay experience as well. In addition to the standard multiplayer and arcade modes, they introduced exciting new modes to the PlayStation port. Recognizing the challenge posed by the first Tekken game and players struggled with different characters, the team came up with the indigenous solution a practice mode. This mode would allow players to become acquainted with various characters and their unique moves. This ambitious project involving character creation, new gameplay modes, and intricate backgrounds spanned over a year. Finally, in 1996, gamers around the world was able to get their hands on Tekken 2. In the late 50s, Lee Hong rose to fame as a film star. After 40 years studying every form of martial art, he is now the highest ranking grandmaster in Korea. Yet he claims to have documentary evidence showing some of his students performing translocation, a quasi-mythical martial arts technique which defies the laws of physics. I don't know who taught them these powers, but it's not me. Tekken 1, 
players have the opportunity to choose from a roster of 18 playable characters. However, in Tekken 2, it took it a step further by expanding the selection to 25 unique characters. What's interesting is that all 18 characters from Tekken 1 made a triumphant return in Tekken 2. Let's take a closer look at the impressive lineup of characters. Jun Kazama is a character in Tekken 2 who stands out not only for her martial prowess but also for her deep connection to nature and her unwavering commitment to protecting it. As an animal protection officer working for the environmental protection group WWWC, Jun's character is shaped by her unique background and tradition she upholds. One of the most striking aspects of Jun's character is her affiliation with the Kazama family's martial arts. This martial arts form is passed down through generations in testament to her family's commitment to preserving their heritage. It's evident that Jun received extensive training in Kazama Aki Jiu Jitsu, a discipline that combines martial skill with a deep respect for the balance of nature. Growing up amidst the lush landscapes of the Yakasuma Island, Jun Kazama was immersed in wonders of nature. However, her time in Tokyo disconnected her from the natural world highlighting the conflict between urbanization and environmental preservation, a theme central to her character. It's a reminder of the challenges faced by those who seek to protect our planet's biodiversity while navigating the demands of modern life. Jun's journey takes a mystical turn when she encounters her late father's spirit, leading her to a deeper understanding of the paranormal phenomena. The spiritual element adds a layer of complexity to her character, highlighting the supernatural forces at play in the tech universe. Jun enters the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2 with a dual mission. First, she is determined to apprehend Kazuya for his involvement in the smuggling of protected animals, an act that directly challenges her role as an animal protection officer. Second, she seeks to free Kazuya from the mysterious malevolent forces that surround him, hinting at a belief of possibility of redemption even in the face of darkness. In her ending, we see a profound representation of Jun's character. The imagery of birds flying over a forest, chipmunks and horses looking up at conveys a sense of harmony between humanity and nature. Jun's arrival at the protected wildlife environment where she bathed in the warm sunlight symbolizes her reconnection with the natural world. The animals surround her, a bird perched on her shoulder, a chipmunk crawling up her arm, and a horse accompanying her underscore her ability to communicate with and protect the animal kingdom. The serene ride on the horse accompanied by various birds and the chipmunk represents a peaceful coexistence between humans and nature. Echoing Jun's mission as an animal protection officer, her ultimate destination and a breathtaking sunset encapsulates her journey towards harmony and her role as a guardian of both the natural and mystical realms. In essence, Jen Kazama's character is a compelling blend of martial art prowess, environmental protection, and deep connection with the mystical forces of the Tekken universe. She represents the idea that a world filled with conflict and turmoil, there are individuals who strive to protect and restore the delicate balance for nature. Next up we have Lei, a character paying homage to legendary martial artist and cultural icon Jackie Chan. Even Lei's nickname Super Cop is a direct nod to Chan taken from the subtitle of the movie Police Story 3, Super Cop, where Chan played the lead role. Lei can even be customized to resemble some of Jackie Chan's iconic characters like Kevin Chang or Wong Fei Hung. Lei Wu Long is a top agent of the Hong Kong International Police Agency, practices a unique form of Chinese Kenpo. He is on a mission to solve the mysterious case of the Mafia's money laundering operation, following in the footsteps of his fallen colleague. Interestingly, a Mafia accountant who was also on the same ill-witted flight that claimed Wulong's partner's life was carrying crucial documents meant for Kazuya. Lei has joined the tournament to confront Kazuya and get answers about this intriguing matter. In Lei's ending, we find him at a shooting practice session. He fires away. 
he eventually runs out of bullets, but instead of frustration, he smiles and smoothly reloads. Lay continues with five more shots with precision, and the camera zooms in the target, and we see the bullet holes forming the words, The End, bringing a fitting conclusion to Lay's story. dive into Bruce Irvin, who draws inspiration from the legendary actor and martial artist Michael J. White. Bruce's journey begins in a world marked by tragedy and adversity. In his early years, he endured the loss of both parents, thrusting him into a life of poverty and relentless violence. But Bruce refused to accept the hand fate had dealt him, and his unwavering determination transformed him into a formidable fighter. With a background in kickboxing, Bruce ventured into Thailand to compete in high-stakes Muay Thai kickboxing tournaments. His exceptional performance shattered the dreams of the reigning champion and drew the wrath of notorious Muay Thai gambling syndicate. However, Bruce's life took an unexpected turn during a fight back home. A contract killer hired by the syndicate made a deadly attempt on his life mid-flight. Luckily, an investigator from Hong Kong's International Police Force also on the plane intervened, sparking a fierce altercation that ultimately led to the plane's crash. In a dramatic twist, a unit affiliated with Kazuya's facilities later rescued Bruce, who managed to survive for months amidst the wreckage and dire circumstances. In Bruce Irvin's character ending, a moment unfolds a young boy becomes an unwitting spectator in Bruce's training regimen. As the boy observes in awe, Bruce displays his impressive martial arts skills, culminating in a devastating kick that sends a punching bag flying off his chains. The boy is left in shock, trembling to the ground. Bruce, recognizing the impact of the display, opens the window and offers the boy an encouraging thumbs up, leaving a lasting impression of his strength and resilience. Next, let's dive into the intriguing backstory of Baek Dusan, a master Taekwondo and the son of a former Taekwondo champion. Baek's story begins in the shadow of his father, a Taekwondo legend. Tragically, his father's career came to an abrupt end due to a deliberating injury. The devastating setback pushed him into a downward spiral of alcoholism, eventually leading to his imprisonment. The family's financial situation worsened, pushing them into poverty. In a heartbreaking turn of events, Bake's mother disappeared, leaving him and his siblings to fend for themselves. In a desperate bid to help, his father managed to escape from prison, but dire circumstances had already taken a toll. Due to extreme hunger and desperation, a tragic accident occurred, and Bake inadvertently caused the death of his beloved father, a man he had held at the highest regard. This traumatic incident haunted Bake leaving him with an overwhelming fear of blood. The authorities intervened, taking him into their care and raising him. Years later, Bake decided to follow in his late father's footsteps, becoming a Taekwondo master and champion. However, a dark secret from his past threatened to unravel a newfound success. Someone who knew the truth about his father's death blackmailed him to eliminating a rival. The tension reaches its peak when Bake faces off against martial law. The confrontation is inevitable. The outcome hangs in the balance. In his poignant ending, we see Bake sitting on a park bench holding a locket containing a cherished photo of him and his father. Memories of their training session and the deep love for his father flood his mind. With a bittersweet smile, Bake finds solace with himself, choosing to remember his father for the remarkable person he was. Bake Dusan's journey is a compelling mix of tragedy, redemption, and the enduring bond between father and son, making him a truly unforgettable character in Tekken 2.
Next, let's dive into the intriguing story of Alex, the boxing kangaroo. When Kazuya established his private military force, his ambitions extended beyond humans to include animals. This led to a groundbreaking research into harnessing animals for military purposes involving experiments with drugs and DNA manipulation. As a result of these experiments, Roger emerged as an extraordinary kangaroo boasting exceptional abilities. Roger could leap astonishing 23 meters in a single bound and achieve speeds up to 60 kilometers per hour. In anticipation of the martial arts tournament, Roger vigilantly patrols his territory, ever ready to confront any intruders. And in Roger's unique ending, a countdown timer sets the stage. A camera assumes a documentary style angle, capturing a serene scene of a kangaroo herd leaping gracefully across the Australian outback. However, the VHS recording rewinds. It zooms into one distinctive kangaroo adorned with boxing gloves. This kangaroo, Roger, stands out from the rest. While others leap, Roger sprints, displaying incredible speed and leaping prowess that far surpass his fellow kangaroos. As he jumps, his altitude dwarfs that of his peers, making him a true standout in the animal kingdom. Next up is Alex, a unique creation in the Tekken 2 roster. The research team working on behalf of Kazuya Mishima's request for ultimate combat creatures embarked on a remarkable experiment. They fused dinosaur DNA recovered from ancient insects encased in amber with that of kangaroos. The result was a fearsome hybrid, Alex. While it appears that Alex is still in the process of maturing, his combat abilities closely resemble those of Roger. However, the intriguing aspect lies in the potential he holds. Many speculate that once Alex reaches full maturity, he could become the most formidable creature on Earth. In his ending cinematic, we catch a glimpse of Alex's connection to his prehistoric roots. He is seen studying a rock containing a dinosaur fossil, and suddenly, a dinosaur visage flashes across the screen. Alex responds with a triumphant roar and begins to run, gradually accelerating as he charges up a mountainside. He encounters an image of one of his dinosaur ancestors. Overjoyed, he leaps into the air, raising his clenched fist in celebration. Yoshimitsu, the enigmatic leader of the notorious Manji Party, an international thieves guild, Yoshimitsu is not your ordinary fighter. He wields a katana at his side and possesses a perpetual powered artificial arm, thanks to the brilliant scientist Dr. Bashanovich. In a daring raid gone wrong, Yoshimitsu's sword arm was brutally severed while attempting to steal the closely guarded secrets of the perpetual engine. Surprisingly, there was the very same doctor, Dr. Bashanovich, who had developed this remarkable technology. Who came to his rescue? Dr. Bashanovich saved Yoshimitsu's life by attaching a perpetually powered artificial arm to him. Now Yoshimitsu has entered the tournament with a noble mission in mind. He is here to repay the debt of gratitude to Dr. Bashanovich. The one holding Dr. Bashanovich captive is none other than Kazuya Mishima. In Yoshimitsu's ending, we witness a breathtaking scene. A white helicopter takes off into the sky, catching Yoshimitsu's attention. With remarkable agility, he leaps onto the helicopter, shattering its windshield, and storms onto the cockpit. There, he rescues Dr. Vashanovich, the man who he owes his very existence. But Yoshimitsu's heroics don't stop there. Using his prosthetic arm and katana like a makeshift propeller, he glides them both back to safety. As the camera focuses on Yoshimitsu, we see the helicopter explode dramatically in the background, a fitting conclusion to this daring rescue mission.
Kunimitsu, known as the Devil Cat, is a character in the Tekken series with a rich and multifaceted backstory. Her character arc is defined by her association with the Manji clan, her pursuit of a treasured sword, and her determination to honor her grandfather's legacy. Kunimitsu's journey begins as a former member of the Manji clan, a group of ninja bandits led by Yoshimitsu. To protect her anonymity, she relinquished her Japanese identity upon joining the clan. However, her affiliation with the clan was short-lived as she was dismissed due to her involvement in petty thefts from the group's funds. With her life taking an unexpected turn, Konimitsu changed her career to a mechanic, specializing in repairing air conditioners. Yet, her past with the Manji clan continued to haunt her, eventually motivating her to enter the first King of Iron Fist tournament. Her primary objective was to steal a Native American treasure from Michelle Chang, but she was swiftly defeated in the tournament. Kunimitsu's character arc takes a significant turn when she seeks guidance from her grandfather, a respected swordsmith. Her grandfather informs her about the immense value and power of Yoshimitsu's sword, which is an heirloom passed down through the Manji clan. The sword possesses the ability to sever an enemy both spiritually and mentally. Moreover, it plays a pivotal role into the clan's leadership transitions, as the sword's power is transferred to the new leader upon ritual sacrifice of the previous one. Fueled by a desire to preserve her family's legacy, Kunimitsu enters the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2 with a singular goal to face and defeat Yoshimitsu, thus claiming his sword. Her intention is to enable her grandfather to craft a copy of the coveted sword before his passing. In her ending, we witness Kunimitsu standing before a large stone in the forest holding Yoshimitsu's sword. Her reflection in the blade symbolizes her journey and determination. She tests the sword's power by slicing the stone in two successfully demonstrating its formidable capabilities. Jack 2. The military android powered by atomic energy emerges as a character with a fascinating blend of artificial intelligence and unexpected humanity within a Tekken's narrative. His character arc carries a distinct moral undercut, exploring the themes of conscience, empathy, and desire for self-realization. At first glance, Jack 2 appears to be a mere weapon of war designed to test his combat effectiveness against germ warfare. However, what sets him apart is his remarkable deviation from his program purpose. Instead of obediently participating in the military's plans, he chooses to rescue a germ-infected little girl on a battlefield, an act that defies his primary directive. This pivotal moment in Jack 2's storyline serves as a turning point, showcasing his capacity for compassion and moral judgment. His decision to save an innocent child humanizes him, challenging the notion that he is just a soulless machine. This choice highlights an inherent conflict between his artificial nature and his human-like qualities. The military efforts to recover Jack 2 and the little girl emphasize a testament to Jack 2's exceptional abilities and potential as a unique entity in the Tekken world. His journey to the tournament takes on a noble purpose to save the scientist who saved him, Dr. Bashanovich, from the clutches of Kazuya, the tournament's enigmatic sponsor. The quest adds a depth to Jack 2's character. It underscores his loyalty and sense of responsibility towards those who created him. The ultimate goal of Jack 2 is to ask Dr. Bajanovich to make him human, which reveals a desire for self-discovery and identity. It raises through provoking questions of the nature of humanity and the blurred boundaries between artificial intelligence and scientific beings. In summary, Jack 2's character in Tekken 2 is a compelling exploration of what it means to be human even in the face of advanced technology. His unexpected acts of kindness and pursuit of humanity add layers of complexity to his identity, making him a standout character in the Tekken series. In the conclusion to Jack 2's narrative, we witness a scene on a tropical island. Jane, the girl he saved, offers a flower to him. As they share a moment, the camera's perspective shifts to outer space, revealing a satellite. The satellite opens, Firing a laser that brings about Jack 2's destruction. As Jane playfully chases a butterfly, Jack 2 falls to the ground, with Jane's presence being the last image etched into his artificial consciousness before it powers down forever.
the Titan Jack. A character in the Tekken series presents an intriguing and somewhat enigmatic personality within the game's lore. Born from the remnants of the first prototype Jack unit, his character art is defined by a series of peculiar events and interactions. Initially, Prototype Jack is introduced to us as a combat unit with formidable abilities, but one prone rampant destruction during the first King of Iron Fist tournament. After this tournament, he is severely damaged, prompting a repair that gives rise to a central quirk of his character. Upon reactivation, Prototype Jack displays a distinct personality trait, an instant complaint about his alter ego, receiving a refit. This complaint persists until his fuel runs out, portraying him as a character with a strong aversion to any changes made to his design. The narrative takes an interesting turn when Prototype Jack is left dormant on Kazuya Mishima's laboratory for an extended period. A backup fuel supply reactivates him, reigniting his demand for a new look. To quell his instant place, Kazuya assigns the task of remodeling the robot to Dr. Vashanovich, a captured scientist. Here, the character's gullibility is showcased as Dr. Boshanovich manages to convince Prototype Jack that his new body, which essentially consists of a hat and sunglasses, provides superior protection compared to his previous form. This narrative adds a layer of humor and absurdity to Prototype Jack's character. Furthermore, Prototype Jack's personality is characterized by repetition and fixation on improvement. He repeatedly practices fighting moves to an excessive extent, resulting in the doctor disconnecting his voice box. This aspect highlights his dedication to enhancing his combat abilities, even if it borders on the obsessive. In his ending, Prototype Jack embarks on a visually striking journey. He maneuvers through a tunnel, emerging into a chamber with a vertical opening. Activating the boosters with his legs, he ascends to the sky, signifying a departure from his previous state. As he flies away, he ultimately self-destructs, with three screws falling back to the ground. This conclusion to his story arc reflects a relentless pursuit of self-improvement, even if it leads to a dramatic explosive finale. Is martial law, a martial arts master whose story unfolds near a Chinese restaurant in the heart of Chinatown. One fateful day while Marshall was away, an enigmatic figure descended upon a very martial arts school he dedicated his life to. The intruder left a trail of destruction in his wake, defeating and injuring every student in the school. Filled with remorse and a deep sense of responsibility, Marshall makes a pivotal decision. He must enter the upcoming martial arts tournament to reclaim honor that was lost. In Martial Law's closing scene, he symbolically joins hands together, casting a glance to his left. Standing beside him is none other than Paul Phoenix, who happens to be both amusing and an embellic of their characters. Marshall executes a flawless somersault kick, showcasing his martial prowess. However, when Paul attempts to mimic the move, hilariously he fails and ends up flat on his stomach. Paul then rests his hand on his head, and Marshall offers incredulous shrug. What adds an extra layer of humor to this ending is the underlying tribute to the real-life martial arts legends, Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. Just as their actual relationship, Law and Paul mirror the dynamics of the fighters and friends in this memorable scene. It's a playful nod to the martial arts world and enduring camaraderie between these iconic characters. Next up is Paul Phoenix, a fighter with no known affiliation to law enforcement agencies or criminal cartels. Despite being classified as a low security risk, Paul's hot-headed nature could potentially lead to trouble. In the inaugural King of Iron Fist tournament, Paul made a name for himself. Notably, he's the only competitor daring enough to take on and defeat a fully grown bear, showcasing his fearlessness. However, 
Paul's journey in the tournament was not without his challenges. He engaged in an epic furious battle that spanned hours, ultimately being defeated by Kazuya Mishima. Disheartened, Paul left the Mishima estate and returned to his hometown in New York. Back in the South Bronx, he found employment as a bouncer. Paul's ego and arrogance often landed him in confrontations with unsavory characters, all of whom quickly learned the hard way of that his judo techniques were unmatched. After months of punishing street fighters across the United States of America, Paul emerged from his experiences with overwhelming confidence, firmly believing himself to be the strongest fighter in the world. As the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2 approaches, Paul is ready to reclaim the glory he believes is rightfully his. In his mind, this time, the tournament belongs to Paul Phoenix. In a fitting end to his journey, Paul is seen riding a motorcycle down a mountainside highway. Suddenly, a rock slide tumbles onto the road, blocking his path. Startled, but undentered, Paul hits the brakes and comes to a stop. Dismounts his motorcycle and with unwavering determination, he steals himself and shatters the obstructing rock with a single powerful punch. Armor King's character is a complex blend of toughness and compassion, as evidenced by his backstory and his actions throughout the first Tekken. His disappearance from the professional fighting world after the first King of Iron Fist tournament shows a desire for a quieter life, away from the glitz and the glamour of the mainstream fighting scene. Instead, he finds his calling in the underground rings, where his skills remain sharp and his combat prowess is still a force to be reckoned with. However, Armor King's character truly shines when he hears about the hardship that has fallen his old friend and rival, King. Learning of King's financial troubles and the tragic death of a child under King's care, Armor King is not content to stay on the sidelines. He embarked on a journey to find King, demonstrating a deep sense of loyalty and concern for his friend's well-being. The moment when Armor King finds King in a mentally broken state in an alleyway is a testament to his compassionate nature. He doesn't just stand by, instead he takes action by giving King his Jaguar mask, a symbol of their shared legacy and identity. He helps reignite King's fighting spirit. This act of friendship and support is heartwarming and adds depth to Armor King's character. In his ending, we get a glimpse of Armor King's vulnerability, the imagery of chest x-rays and the EKG waveform along with the sound of a rapidly ticking clock. Hints at a heart condition, showing that even the toughest fighters have their weaknesses. Despite his physical challenges, Armor King remains strong. He prepares for his wrestling match, showing determination and willingness to face adversity head on. The moment when his vision blurs and blood runs from a damaged eye creates a sense of suspense and drama, highlighting the physical toll that a life of combat has taken on him. However, Armor King's unwavering spirit shines through as he enters the ring to excitement of the crowd. This closure scene underscores his resilience and dedication to his craft, making him a character who embodies both strength and humility. King is one of the most emotionally complex and empathetic characters in the Tekken series, and his character arc is a testament to the depth of storytelling within the franchise. His journey from a wrestler seeking glory in the ring to a caretaker for orphan children showcases his transformation and commitment to a higher purpose. Initially, King was a formidable fighter achieving third place in the first King of Iron Fist tournament. However, tragedy struck when an orphan under his care passed away. This devastating loss led to King's withdrawal from the world of professional wrestling, marked by him discarding his iconic Jaguar mask and leaving everything behind. His despair and anger overwhelmed him, pushing him to escape from his responsibilities and the pain of his past. Armor King, recognizing the depth of King's suffering and potential, embarked on a mission to find his friend. Despite a long and fruitful search, 
Armor King eventually located King in a desolate alley behind a bar. What he witnessed was a broken man, someone who had lost their way. In this pivotal moment, Armor King became the voice of reason and compassion. He convinced King to return to the orphanage and resume caring for the children who still depended on him. He also urged King to reignite his training for the upcoming King of Iron Fist Tournament 2. The ending of King's character arc is particularly poignant. It takes place on a snowy Christmas morning where King watches orphans he takes care for celebrate the holiday with an orphanage worker through the window. His internal shame and disappointment from losing the tournament are palpable. However, King's actions speak louder than words when he quietly leaves a pile of presents for the children, symbolizing his commitment to their well-being. The most touching moment occurs when the children, sensing King's presence and love, rush out to greet him. Their joy and excitement are palpable, and King's head raises in happiness, acknowledging he has found new purpose in life. This ending encapsulates the essence of King's character, a man who, despite his own trials and tribulations, finds solace and redemption in caring for others. King's character arc is a testament to the power and empathy of resilience, showing that even in the face of personal tragedy, one can find a renewed sense of purpose and happiness by extending kindness and love to those in need. complex character in the Tekken series, and her backstory and actions reveal intriguing facets of her personality. Her role in the second tournament adds depth to her character. One notable aspect of Anna's character is her sister relationship with Nina Williams. Despite being hired to assassinate Kazuya Mishima, Anna intervenes by becoming a bodyguard for Kazuya, thus preventing her sister from carrying out the contract. This act of protecting her sister suggests that there is a bond of loyalty and perhaps a sense of responsibility towards Nina. Anna's decision to stand in her sister's way, even when their lives are entwined with violence, showcases her complex mix of emotions. The twist in the story comes when Nina is captured by the Mishima Zaibatsu, forces and subjected to cryonics research. Anna, upon learning about her sister's fate, willingly volunteers to be a test subject herself. This decision raises questions about Anna's motivations. It suggests that she might have felt a sense of loneliness without Nina, or perhaps jealousy in the prospect of her sister's youth being preserved while she ages. This adds a layer of ambiguity to her character, leaving room for interpretation. In her ending scene, we get a glimpse of the playful rivalry between the two sisters. As Anna steps out the shower, Nina sneaks into the bathroom and takes a revealing picture of her. This moment captures the teasing and competitive nature of their relationship, showcasing a mix of humor and rivalry. In summary, Anna Williams is a character defined by a complex relationship with her sister Nina, and her actions in the second tournament demonstrate a blend of loyalty, protectiveness, and potentially deeper emotions. Her willingness to undergo cryonetics research to be with her sister in the future adds an intriguing layer of mystery to her character. Irish assassin in the world of Tekken it is a character defined by her enigmatic persona and the complexities of her relationships. Armed with a formidable command of Kampapu and Aikido techniques, she is a force to be reckoned with in combat. However, it's not just her combat prowess that defines her character, but the tangled web of emotions that she grapples with. At the heart of Nina's character lies a fractured bond with her estranged sister, Anna. Their relationship is marred by bitterness and animosity, creating a rift that seems insurmountable. 
their father, Richard Williams, in his final moments, pleaded with Nina to mend the broken ties between them. His dying wish was for his daughters to reconcile, but Nina, burdened with the weight of their shared history and conflicts, could not bring herself to fulfill her father's last request. Despite her deadly profession as an assassin, there is a glimmer of hope with Nina. As she enters the King of Iron Fist tournament, her intentions are to diverge from her usual assignments. Rather than pursuing her assassination mission targeting Kazuya, Nina's primary objective is to put an end to the deadly quarreling that has defined her relationship with Anna. It's a surprising shift in priorities, revealing a desire for a resolution that runs deeper than the profession would suggest. Nina's ending scene is a reflection of her character's complexity. As she stands in a cemetery placing flowers on her father's grave, a sense of solemnity surrounds her. However, her solitude is soon interrupted by the approach of Anna, her estranged sister. Nina, always vigilant and armed, initially greets Anna with a wary glare. Ready for confrontation, yet in a gesture of bringing flowers to their father, elicits a different response. She smiles and shakes her head, indicating her intention to pay respect to their father as well. In a moment, as Nina lowers her weapon and departs, there is a subtle shift in her demeanor. A guarded facade softens. A hint of a smile appears. It's small, almost an unknown gesture, but it speaks volumes about Nina's character. Beneath the layers of conflict and rivalry, there is a longing of reconciliation and a shared understanding with her sister. It's a moment of vulnerability that showcases the complexity of Nina Williams, a character who, despite her deadly skills and hardened exterior, carries a glimmer of hope and a hidden smile within her. Michelle Chang is a fascinating character, and her background reflects a rich tapestry of cultural diversity and personal determination. As an American of Chinese and Native American heritage, Michelle embodies a unique blend of traditions and values, which adds depth to her character. Her proficiency in Chinese Kenpo martial arts speaks to her dedication and discipline, showcasing her as a formidable fighter. However, it's her personal journey and the pendant entrusted by her father that truly define her character's motivation. The pendant, which also doubles as a key, serves as both a symbolic and little representation of her quest. It holds a secret of great importance, and its safekeeping is a testament to Michelle's sense of responsibility and loyalty to her family. The plot twist involving Kazuya's actions adds a layer of conflict to Michelle's narrative. Her mother's kidnapping forces her into the Tekken tournament once more, emphasizing her willingness to go a great length to protect her loved ones. Michelle's ending where she makes a deliberate choice to toss the pendant into the water is a powerful moment of character development. It symbolizes her ability to move forward and let go of the burdens of the past, even when they hold deep sentimental value. The decision illustrates her strength and resilience as a character. Ryu's character in the Tekken series is a fascinating blend of honor, ambition, and moral complexity. As a sumo wrestler, he initially rises through the ranks with a great merit in becoming the youngest fighter to achieve the Persingis Ozinke rank. This accomplishment places him on the cusp of reaching the ultimate title of sumo wrestling, that of Yokozuna. However, Gan Ryu's downfall begins with his unconventional and flamboyant style in the sumo ring. He starts his bouts with fire breathing and fanfare openly taunting his opponents. This flamboyance, coupled with a destructive gambling habit, ultimately leads to this honorable discharge from the sumo world. It's a striking portrayal of the clash between traditional and individuality, where Ganryu's unorthodox approach disrupts the established norms of sumo. Upon entering the criminal world, Ganryu's ambition takes a different turn. 
He is determined to become the world's strongest man, but this time it's driven by his own code of honor. Rather than traditions of sumo, this intriguing shift in his character reveals a man who is willing to adapt and pursue his goals, even if it means stepping outside the boundaries of conventional morality. His encounter with Yoshimitsu during the first King of Iron Fist tournament marks a turning point. Despite being defeated by Yoshimitsu, Ganryu's skills catch the eye of Kazuya Mishima, who hires him as a bodyguard for the Mishima Zaibatsu. This decision reflects Ganryu's resilience and adaptability as he transitions from the world of sumo to the corporate and criminal spheres. What adds depth to Ganryu's character is his personal motivation beyond the power and wealth. He harbors a secret crush on Michelle Chang, a fellow tournament participant, and hopes to impress her by building and owning a sumo rink. This adds a touch of vulnerability and humanity to his character, showcasing a softer side beneath his imposing exterior. In his ending scene, Genryu stands in the sumo arena, nodding confidently at the screen before demonstrating some sumo moves. This symbolizes his unwavering determination and commitment to his goals. The close-up of his photograph at the end hints at the complex layers of his character, encapsulating a man who defies expectations and seeks his path to honor and strength. intriguing figure within the Mishima saga. Despite his advanced age, Wang's character is defined by an unwavering bravery and a deep sense of loyalty to his friend Jinpachi Mishima. Wang's martial arts expertise showcases his commitment to his craft, highlighting that age hasn't diminished his combat prowess. His affiliation with Jinpachi is a pivotal aspect of his character, and it ties him to the overarching conflict with the Mishima clan. In the narrative, Wang's connection to Jinpachi compels him to join the King of Iron Fist tournament, driven by Jinpachi's favorite wish for the destruction of the Mishima clan as a means to bring about peace. This loyalty and sense of duty are central to Wang's character, illustrating his moral compass and deep-rooted principles. However, what makes Wang's character particularly intriguing is his internal conflict. He seeks to transfer the burden of confronting and potentially defeating Kazuya Mishima to someone else capable of carrying out this challenging task. His reluctance to directly engage in this conflict reflects on his desire to avoid unnecessary violence and bloodshed. Nevertheless, Wang's dedication to Jinpachi's wish remains unshakable, and he is prepared to take action if there is no one else willing or able to carry out this mission. This unwavering commitment to a friend's wishes underscores the depth of his character and the moral dilemmas he grapples throughout the entire Tekken narrative. Wang's ending sequence where he visits Jinpachi grave is a reflection of his character. Pouring a bottle drink over the gravestone symbolizes respect and remembrance, while Wang's act of drinking from a small cup signifies a sense of closure and acceptance. A close-up of Wang's face captures the emotional weight of his journey, invoking a sense of melancholy and resolve. The character in the Tekken series undergoes a compelling character arc that is deeply entwined with his relationship with the Mishima family. Initially introduced as Heihashi Mishima's adopted son, Lee is shaped by the same imperialistic teachings that were instilled within Kazuya Mishima. These teachings drive him to pursue martial arts mastery, making him a prodigious talent in both intelligence and combat skills. However, Lee's character takes significant turn when he faces a devastating defeat at the hands of his adopted brother, Kazuya. This defeat shatters him both physically and spiritually, leading him to withdraw from the world and isolate himself in the mountains. During this period of self-imposed exile, Lee's training becomes relentless but lacks precision, reflecting his inner turmoil. 
The turning point in Lee's journey comes with the appearance of a mysterious old man who offers some guidance on how to refine and focus his martial arts skills. Lee's innate talent begins to resurface under this mentorship, reigniting his determination to confront his brother, Kazuya, and put it into his reign of power. In his ending sequence, we see Lee's ultimate triumph as he emerges victorious in the King of Iron Fist tournament. He ascends to the position of the head of the Mishima Zaibatsu, a powerful and influential conglomerate within the Tekken universe. With Heihachi and Kazuya both in prison, Lee reveals a newfound authority and control. His symbolic thumbs down gesture represents his disapproval of his adopted family's ruthless ways. Contrasting with his proud and confident demeanor, he points to himself. Lee's character arc is a testament to his resilience, personal growth, and transformation from a shattered individual to a formidable force in the attacking world. His journey is marked by both internal and external battles, making him a complex and intriguing character in the series. Kazuya Mishima's character in the Tekken series is a complex and morally ambiguous figure. His portrayal in Tekken 2 showcases his unrelenting desire for power and dominance over his family's financial empire, the Mishima Financial Group, which he inherited by defeating his father, Heihachi, in a previous tournament. This victory is a source of immense pride for Kazuya as it symbolizes his supremacy over his father. One notable aspect of Kazuya's character is his ambition to establish an independent nation. This ambition speaks to his hunger for not only personal power, but also political influence and control on a grand scale. It highlights his ruthlessness and willingness to use any means necessary to achieve his objectives. The ending sequence provides further insight into Kazuya's character. In this scene, we witness a moment of conflict within him. Initially, when Heihachi protects him from the devil's attack, there's a glimpse of surprise and perhaps a flicker of genuine emotion in Kazuya's response. He briefly contemplates the possibility of reconciliation or redemption with his father. However, this moment is short-lived and we see Kazuya's true nature prevail. He uses Heihachi as a human shield, demonstrating his cold-hearted and opportunistic side. When Devil continues to attack, Kazuya ultimately sacrifices his father, throwing Heihachi at Devil to deflect an attack and then delivers a fatal blow to Devil. This ending exemplifies the internal struggle within Kazuya, a battle between his humanity and his insatiable thirst for power and vengeance. Ultimately, his lust for power wins as he dispatches both Devil and Heihachi, solidifying his position as a formidable and unyielding antagonist in the Tekken series. Kazuya Mishima's character is a testament to the complex and morally gray storytelling in Tekken making him one of the series' most compelling and enduring figures. His journey is a reflection of the dark and intricate narrative threads that run through the Tekken universe, adding depth and intrigue to the world of the Iron Fist tournament. As a character in the Tekken series, embodies an enigmatic and deeply entwined relationship with Kazuya Mishima. His presence and actions are deeply rooted in the lore of the series, and his significance extends beyond the mere gameplay mechanics. Devil's character is shrouded in mystery, with his intentions remaining elusive throughout the series. The notion that his history has been built many times over again and again with each reincarnation suggests a timeless and cynical nature to his existence. This concept hints a profound connection with the Mishima family's destiny, which spans generations. 
The statement that something with mysterious intentions watches over him alludes to Devil's role as a silent observer and perhaps a manipulator in Kazuya's fate. This implies a complex relationship with Devil's motivations concealed beneath the surface. Devil's physical appearance serves as a striking representation of these mysterious intentions. His design, which often includes demonic features and wings, contrasts sharply with the more human appearance of other characters. This contrast highlights the supernatural and otherworldly nature of Devil, emphasizing a unique role in the story. In Devil's Tekken 2 ending, the separation of Devil from Kazuya's body and the emergence of Devil in his own form mark a pivotal moment in the narrative. The separation suggests a level of autonomy and independence for Devil, raising questions about his true nature and goals. of the Tekken universe, the character of Angel emerges as a symbol of duality, escapulating both light and darkness with her being. Angel's existence is intricately linked to the presence of Devil, the malevolent force that inhabits Kazuya Mishima. This connection manifests in an intriguing manner, where some perceive Angel as a jet black devil, while others witness visual as an angel. Angel's enigmatic character is further illustrated by her ending sequence, a symbolic journey that hints at the intricate balance between these opposing forces. Perched on a skyscraper, she gazes into the sky, suggesting a connection to the celestial realm. Suddenly, with a fearless leap, she descends into the engulfing fog below, signifying her willingness to confront unknown. As the angel plummets, the faces of ten original fighters flash through her mind, invoking a sense of unity and shared destiny among these formidable combatants. The image of the ten skeletal hands interlocking in a circle as if forming a pack signifies a profound bond that transcends the mortal realm. This transformative moment occurs as Devil is surrounded by winged skeletons, the juxtaposition of light and darkness represented by Angel and Devil respectively underscores the eternal struggle between good and evil that premeditates the image ascending into the moonlight sky. Orbs of light are shown in the palm of her hand, symbolizing her inherent connection to the forces of good and purity. With a burst of energy, she releases these orbs into the night, infusing it with radiance and hope. Angel's character serves as a reminder that even within the most complex and conflicted individuals, there exists a potential for balance and redemption. Her presence in the Tekken series adds depth in an overseeing narrative, emphasizing the enduring theme of inner turmoil and the eternal struggle between darkness and light. The formidable bear in the Tekken series is a character whose complexity lies beneath his fearsome appearance. His character profile unveils a unique blend of intelligence, loyalty, and surprisingly a taste for human flesh. One striking aspect of Kuma's character is his exceptional intelligence, which sets him apart from other animals in Heihachi's estate. This intellect, combined with his loyalty to Heihachi Mishima, made Kuma a distinctive and intriguing character. However, his heightened intelligence seemed to unnerve Heihachi's associates, prompting some flee and fear in this highly intelligent bear. Kuma's penchant for the taste of human flesh adds an eerie and somewhat disturbing dimension to his character. This dark trait, though, contrasts sharply with his unwavering loyalty to Heihachi. Despite his loyalty, Kuma exhibited somewhat a lazy disposition, often leaving Heihachi's side even during the summer months to sleep. This laziness reflected in his disjointed fighting style, which never truly matured and was a factor in his previous defeat by Paul Phoenix in the King of Iron Fist tournament. Paul Phoenix's victory in the previous encounter impressed Kuma greatly. Prior to this, Kuma believed that the only strong human was Heihachi. Heihachi's loss in the last tournament to Kazuya Mishima led him to retreat to a mountain dojo for retraining. 
Kuma's determination to defeat Paul Phoenix in the next tournament is evident as he vowed to do so, even expressing a willingness to consume anyone who obstructed his path. Kuma's ending in Tekken is a testament to his closer relationship with Heihachi. It showcases their collaboration and training exercise, where Kuma's impressive physical abilities are on display as he breaks glass blocks and brick wall with headbutts. This ending not only highlights Kuma's strength, but also undergoes a commitment to supporting training alongside his master Heihachi. Hachi Mishima, a pivotal character in the Tekken series, undergoes a fascinating transformation in Tekken 2. Reflecting his complex personality and unyielding determination, in the aftermath of his defeat by his son Kazuya in the previous tournament, Heihachi experiences a profound loss of not only his dignity, but also his fortune. This humbling defeat shakes Heihachi to his core, prompting him to reevaluate his life and choices. He retreats into seclusion deep within the mountains, accompanied by his loyal friend Kuma. During this period of isolation, Heihachi channels his grief and regrets into honing his martial arts skills, specifically refining his Mishima combat karate. This retreat serves as a metaphorical and literal journey of self-discovery and redemption for Heihachi. The theme of redemption is crucial in understanding Heihachi's character arc in Tekken 2. Heihachi's remorse for his past actions, including his neglect of education, becomes a driving force behind his determination to reclaim his position of the dominant force within the Mishima family. Heihachi, always seeking to be at the top, catches wind of Kazuya's new Tekken tournament and seizes the opportunity to participate, viewing it as a chance for redemption to regain his lost honor. Heihachi's commitment to this mission is exemplified by his distinctive act of sharpening his hair, symbolizing his readiness for battle. It's a visual representation of his mental and physical preparation to confront his son and reclaim his throne within the Mishima Zaibatsu. The climax of Heihachi's character arc unfolds in his ending sequence. After defeating Kazuya and emerging victorious in the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2, Heihachi is portrayed as holding an unconscious son in his arms. This moment changed the emotional complexity as Heihachi's actions reveal a mix of paternal concern and ruthless determination. The volcanic setting adds a layer of symbolism representing the fiery, terminous relationship between father and son. As Heihachi drops Kazuya's body into the volcano, it is a metaphorical purging of their family conflicts and a decisive assertion of Heihachi's dominance. The subsequent shot of Heihachi leaving the helicopter while clutching the ladder embodies a triumph return of reclaiming power. The closing close of Heihachi's smiling face underscores the complexity of his character. Heihachi's grin can be interpreted in various ways, symbolizing his satisfaction with his victory, his resolve to maintain control, or even a sense of irony regarding the ongoing cycle of rivalry within the Mishima family. In summary, Heihachi Mishima's character arc in Tekken 2 is a testament to the nuanced storytelling within the game. He undergoes a journey of the most iconic and intriguing characters in the Tekken series. Now that we've covered the entire cast of characters, let's delve into the gripping storyline of Tekken 2. The narrative of Tekken 2 unfolds like a dramatic and intense chess match with the Machiavellian world of the Mishima family. Building upon the events of the previous tournament, the game delves deeper into the treacherous dynamics and complex motivations of its iconic characters, primarily focusing on the power struggle between father and son, Heihachi and Kazuya Mishima. Two years have passed since the King of Iron Fist tournament, and the Mishima Zaibatsu, now under the ruthless leadership of Kazuya Mishima, has transformed into an even more corrupt and powerful entity. Kazuya's reign is marked by a level of malevolence and cruelty that surpasses even his father's infamous reputation. 
He engages in illegal activities, including hiring assassins to eliminate rivals and critics, attempting extortion from businesses, and conducting unethical genetic experiments on endangered species. This descent into darkness is driven by his deep-seated hatred for his father, Heihachi, and the malevolent influence of the devil gene within inside of him. The devil gene serves as a central theme of source of conflict in the story. It represents the manifestation of Kazuya's inner demons and his growth of malevolence. This internal battle between humanity and the sinister power of the devil gene is a core element of the narrative, highlighting the internal struggle that defines Kazuya's character. Heihachi, who meticulously survived being thrown off a cliff by Kazuya in the previous tournament, has spent the past two years climbing his way back up, honing his martial arts skills. He harbors a burning desire for revenge against his son and aims to reclaim the Mishima Zaibatsu. Kazuya, aware of his father's determination, cunningly announced the King of Iron Fist Tournament 2, offering a staggering cash prize of $1 trillion. He does this with the full knowledge that Heihachi will be unable to resist the temptation of revenge and the opportunity to regain control of the Zaibatsu. Enter Jun Kazama, an animal rights activist and operative who crossed paths with Kazuya due to his involvement in illegal animal experience. She represents the force of justice and righteousness in a world tainted by corruption. Jun's character brings a moral dimension to the story and seeks to not only arrest Kazuya but also free him from the clutches of the devil gene. Her connection with Kazuya goes beyond duty as they are drawn together by mysterious forces beyond her control. As the tournament progresses, it becomes a battleground for resolving personal vendettas and complex family dynamics. Heihachi is on the path to vengeance, defeats opponents, including his adopted son, Lee Shaolan, who aligned with Kazuya. Paul Phoenix, another formidable fighter, earns the right to rematch with Kazuya, only to be replaced by Heihachi in the final due to a twist of fate. The climax of the story takes place in the tournament finals, where father and son, Heihachi and Kazuya, face each other once again. It is a battle that transcends the physical realm with the devil gene within Kazuya, attempting to consume him entirely. However, the internal conflict within Kazuya becomes evident as the influence of an enigmatic entity known as Angel emerges. Angel represents Kazuya's inner struggle, a beacon of his remaining humanity, fighting against the darkness. In a riveting showdown, Heihachi ultimately prevails over Kazuya, defeating him and reclaiming the Mishima Zaibatsu. The climax of the story is marked by Heihachi's ruthless act of throwing his unconscious son into a volcano. This symbolic and cinematic moment signifies the triumphant of Heihachi's desire for revenge and control. In conclusion, Tekken 2 presents a rich, multifaceted narrative that explores themes of power, revenge, redemption, and the battle between good and evil. It delves into the depths of his character's psyches, revealing the more complexities of their motivations and the internal struggles they face. The story's dramatic crescendo in the tournament finals is a testament to the game's storytelling prowess, making it a memorable and compelling entry in the Tekken series. Now let's delve into the gameplay of Tekken 2. The gameplay in Tekken 2 closely follows its predecessor Tekken, while introducing some noteworthy additions. It maintains the same 2D backgrounds in the stages and infinite playing field, and a fighting system centered around four buttons, left punch, right punch, left kick, right kick. Among the distinctive new features were attack reversals available for certain characters, back throws, chain throws, and exclusive sidestep move for two characters, Kazuya Mishima and Heihachi Mishima. However, it's important to note that Yoshimitsu also had a spinning sidestep move, albeit that came with the cost of his health. Additionally, tackles were tweaked to inflict damage when initiated from a greater distance. One intriguing aspect of the game is that each time you complete the game with one of the default characters available in the arcade mode, you unlock the associated sub-boss character for the selection. Moving on to the home console version of Tekken 2 introduced several game modes that will become staples in the series. Survival Mode this mode pits players against an endless steam of opponents, challenging them to defeat as many foes as possible without succumbing themselves. Notably, any health lost during a match carries over to the next one, although the player regains a small portion of health between rounds. Team Battle Mode In this mode, players can select up to 8 characters and partake in a single round matches. Similar to Survival Mode, health lost during this match carries over and players regain a small amount of health between rounds. The player retains their character until they are defeated, at which point the next character takes their place. This mode concludes when all characters on either team are eliminated. Time Attack Mode 
This mode closely resembles arcade mode, but focuses on the speed and record setting. Players aim to complete the game as quickly as possible and establish new records, putting their name as if it was an arcade. Lastly, practice mode, which enables players to refine their skills with selected characters. They can experiment with various moves, techniques, and hone their abilities against the training dummy. Reflecting my experience with Tekken 2 brings a sense of nostalgia and admiration for a game that has undoubtedly left its mark on the world of gaming. It's been quite a journey and it's remarkable how the game manages to hold up even after all these years. As I reflect on my journey with Tekken 2, I'm transported back to a time when this game was not just a source of entertainment, but a groundbreaking phenomenon that redefined the world of 3D fighters. Released as a sequel to the original Tekken which had already set new standards for the PlayStation, Tekken 2 had the daunting task of not just meeting expectations, but surpassing them, and as I venture into the realm of this iconic fighting game, it did not disappoint. One of the first things that struck me about Tekken 2 was its commitment to pushing the boundaries of visual excellence. The improvements in the graphics were immediately noticeable, and it was evident that the developers at Namco had poured their creative engines into crafting a world that was not only visually stunning, but also immersive. The backgrounds once burned in the original Tekken now came alive with intricate details and occasional movements. It was a shift from the minimalist virtual fighter style backdrops to fighting arenas that felt alive and vibrant. The aspect that truly left me in awe was the implementation of light sourcing. It was a game changer in the truest sense. I couldn't help but marvel at the way it added depth and realism to the battles. The interplay of light shadows on the characters and the environments was a testament to the dedication of the development team to deliver a visual stunning experience. However, graphics alone did not make a great game. Tekken 2 understood this well ensued gameplay remained rock solid. The characters, while remaining a hint of blockiness compared to some contemporary games, moved with a fluidity that was unmatched. The animation had been considerably smoothed out creating a sense of authenticity in the fights. It was a reminder that in the world of gaming, it's not just about how you look, but how you move and engage with your surroundings that truly matters. One of the standout features of Tekken 2 was its character roster, with more than 20 playable characters, including sub-bosses that gradually became available over time upon victory. It was a treasure trove for fighting game enthusiasts. Each character brought their unique style and flair to the arena, ensuring that the battles were never repetitive. The inclusion of various game modes added layers of depth to the experience. Tournament modes, survival modes, and the much needed practice mode were all welcome additions. The practice mode in particular felt like a long overdue feature that made mastering the game's intricacies more accessible. Now Tekken 2 may not have been perfect, but it came remarkably close. It stood as a testament to the evolution of 3D fighters, a genre that had grown immensely since the release of the original Tekken. The game was a testament to the dedication and vision of the development team at Namco, who not only met expectations set by the first game, but exceeded them in many ways. My journey with Tekken 2 was more than just a series of fights. It was an exploration of possibilities within the world of gaming. It was a reminder that the impact that a single game can have on the entire industry and the lasting memories it can create for players. Even today, as I look back on my time with Tekken 2, I can't help but feel a sense of nostalgia, appreciation for the masterpiece that it was. It wasn't just one of the best fighters available for the PlayStation. It was a defining moment in gaming history that left an undeniable mark on those who experienced it. This game has to get a 9 out of 10. I recommend you go try it out. Thank you for joining me in this captivating journey through the world of Tekken. I hope you enjoyed this insightful retrospective. If you found this video intriguing, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell to stay up to date on all our latest retrospectives. This is the Retro Phantom, signing out.